नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माई एडिटोरियल एज यूजल आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू टू शेयर दिस कॉन्टेंट टू शेयर दिस कॉन्टेंट इफ यू फील इट इज वर्थ अ शेयर बिकॉज यूट्यूब डज नॉट डिस्ट्रीब्यूट आर कॉन्टेंट द वे इट शुड सो वी रिक्वेस्ट यू टू शेयर आर कॉन्टेंट सो दैट दिस कॉन्टेंट कैन रीच मोर एंड मोर पीपल ओके नाउ लेट्स कम टू द टॉपिक ऑफ द डे एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ द डे इज Chief Justice of India N V Ramanna spoke on the D P Kohli Memorial Lecture. He spoke on democracy, role, and responsibility of investigative agencies. A very very interesting topic. And what do you think he said? Let's get right into the show. Okay, I'm going to read a lot in this uh, in this editorial because a lot of things he said. I want to. Uh, get it to you verbatim and then we will try and analyze what he said so let's start with uh, what he said first he said need of the hour is to reclaim social legitimacy and public trust he says central agencies needs to get social legitimacy and public trust the first step to gain the same is to break the nexus with political executives he said baba political masters are necessary but you should break the nexus if you start listening to political executives end of the day you will have no social respect no social credibility a very valid point okay he went on to say that for a pluralistic society like ours our rich diversity cannot be sustained through dictatorial governance when it comes to cbi he says it possesses immense trust of the public in its initial phase in fact the judiciary used to be flooded with request for transfer of investigations to cbi as it was a symbol of impartiality and independence whenever the citizenry doubted the skills and impartiality of its own state police they sought investigation by cbi as they wanted justice to be done he said he went on to say that but the passage of time like every other institution of repute the cbi has also come under deep public scrutiny its actions and inactions have raised questions regarding its credibility in some cases there is an immediate requirement for creation of an independent umbrella institution so as to bring various agencies like the cbi sfio ed etc under one roof this body is required to be created under the statute clearly defining its powers functioning jurisdiction he said adding that such a law will also lead to much needed legislative oversights now he went on to say that the umbrella body should be headed by an independent impartial authority by a committed akin to one which appoints the director of cbi the head of the organization can be assisted by deputies who are specialist in different domains the umbrella organization will end multiplicity of proceedings a single incident these days gets investigated by multiple agencies often leading to delusion of evidence contradictions in dispositions prolonged incarceration of innocent it will also save the institution from being blamed as a tool of harassment once an incident is reported the organization should decide as to which specialized wing should take up investigation police and public order being in the state list the burden of investigation is primarily on the state police and there is no reason why state investigating agencies cannot enjoy the same level of credibility as the national agency so that's what he says is concluded saying that the image of the institution of police is regrettably tarnished by allegations of corruption police excess lack of impartiality and close nexus with the political class so the fact is what long and short he is saying he is saying kele sen you know what cbi once upon a time had tremendous image okay now like all the other agencies they also are now the lack of credibility definitely shows definitely shows what he is saying is he is saying all these central agencies cbi ed uh, sfi and all these central agencies you know end of the day they should be all bought under one unit 
one up head and therefore bringing a method to this entire system and therefore you know you don't have one person uh, you know being followed by you know you invest for one case investigated by six agencies and therefore diluting the the evidence therefore contradicting the disposition all that should not happen it it will be more it will be more systematic it will be more professional this is what he says and he says baba listen in the process no don't just you know ignore state police state police also needs to have credibility end of the day they investigate the state cases most of the state cases 90% of the state cases are investigated by the state police so just don't just don't brush them aside and say everything you know uh, if there is a political need if the center feels that you know they 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 they, they, they need to control this particular case so you have the central agencies there aisa thodi hota hai aisa thodi hota hai law has to decide whether it is a central agency coming and investigating a case or a state agency investigating a case it is not political parties which we see very recently especially in maharashtra you see a lot of it you know what the closer you are seen to the political class the more credibility you lose your nexus with the political class which he is talking about all he he talks about this he talks about political nexus for every agency he says till such time that you detach yourself from political uh, political nexus you will not be able to you will not be able to get credibility for your department this is what he says well fine so uh, broadly uh, i i took you through his speech now let's start and analyzing a few things we always blame cbi ed police eh yeah, they should not be uh, in nexus with the with the politicians they should not be in excess nexus they should not listen to their political masters but what has the system which includes the chief justice of india which includes the supreme court and which includes the of course the parliament what have we done to ensure or empower that a police can say no to a politician a police can say no to a politician any police officer any police officer unless and until he is uh, he or she has dedicated her life and you know they go through 70 transfers in their in their entire life and you know they goes they 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 are given the worst of positions they have given the worst of uh, uh, postings and they are they are you know tormented throughout their career and they are ready for it unless and until you are that you are a family man you also like to uh, you know work on your career you have to listen to the politicians that's how the system is designed the system is designed because a politician controls your promotion the politician controls your posting the politician controls your 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 increments the politician controls everything that you have a politician can make a police officer an ips officer or a or a or a cbi director or whoever redundant if he wants to he can pick up a, a senior police officer and ensure that he sits at home he sits at home without a posting he will be he will be very much in the force but he will have no posting and they will say dekha jayega the post hoega khali hoega we'll see he can they can do that they have done it they have done it so what do you expect these these central agencies to do see they can bolna talking is easy telling we blaming the central agencies we blaming these police officers not are easy and they are wrong also because most of them are not loyal to their their uniforms they are not loyal to their chairs they are not that also is a fact that also is a fact but also we need to understand as a country and as intelligent people we also need to understand that by somehow you have to empower them that they can say no to a politician today they can't so that's a, a point uh, that he said and this is the point that i wanted to make and the next question i want to ask is why is that why is that people say all these things almost nearing their retirement or once they are retired why do they see flaws in the system in the verge of retirement or after they are retired why do they do that you know i will also talk about another chief justice former chief justice who is now an mp by the way his name is mr gogoy and uh, in a television interview when he was asked that is there corruption in the supreme court as well he said to which he said corruption is a way of life in fact his actual words were corruption is as old as society corruption has become a way of life an acceptable way of life judges don't drop from heaven he said what he meant is baba kya supreme court mein bhi corruption hai supreme court mein bhi corruption hai bhagwan se thodi they don't come from heaven no judges they are also in the from the society and society corruption is acceptable so yeah what he actually implicated is uh, there is a corruption in the supreme court what was he doing he was a chief justice no what was he doing when he knew that there was corruption so either i am saying i am not saying he was corrupt i don't want to say i am not saying he no either but i am saying either he was ex accepting the fact that you know corruption is okay 
or he didn't want to do anything i don't know maybe he was enjoying the privilege of of of, of corruption too i don't know the point is my question is that why don't people act why don't people act when they are in the chair why do they talk about it once they are either retired or almost about retiring number 1 number 2 you see we talk it's good and i i appreciate the fact that uh, justice nv ramanna talks and he talks and he makes a lot of sense because whatever he said every word he said in this lecture was absolutely commendable and correct but then i want to ask him what about the petition challenging the abrogation of article 370 and the bifurcation of erstwhile state of jammu and kashmir into two union territories what about that why is that case still pending in the supreme court why has there been there been no judgment on that why is the electoral bonds and transparency in financing elections why is that case still pending why is the validity of citizenship amendment act pending why did count why is the counting of votes and credibility of election commissions pending why are these important cases pending in the supreme court why isn't it taking action and finishing off and 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 getting things cleared these are things that can change the course of this country these are things that will bring about this kind of changes this kind of uh, this kind of change that he actually talks about these course corrections will bring this kind of changes why isn't he this is well within his power no he is the chief justice of india no so he can do all this why are these changes not why are these cases still pending in in supreme court this is the question i want to ask him and and in fact plead to him that listen let's get these cases cleared if these cases are heard if there is a decision on them we can move ahead maybe this is the first step so that's uh, my point but that being said what he said in this uh, uh, 19th dp kohli memorial lecture was absolutely sensible what he spoke was very sensible what he spoke is correct and i hope a lot of things that he said is put into action i really hope and pray that is put into action that said i will urge you once again please share this content i will urge you to uh, log on to www.hwnews.in subscribe to our packages subscribe whatever packages you think is affordable and help us uh, run the channel and uh, till i see you next time namaskar